MG The Future again, doing a follow-up video for my last hip-hop arrangement tutorial. I got a comment that wanted to see how I arrange a track after I get it going in Ableton Live, so that's what I'll be doing today. Um, this one's for NHE Angles. He said, love it man, make a follow-up tutorial on how you arrange that beat into a finished track. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same beat from the last tutorial. With arrangement at least, you can arrange tracks in a lot of different ways. It's really going to boil down to what you're arranging for. Um, sometimes you might be arranging for video, you might be arranging for an R&B singer, um, and that's definitely going to be different than someone who's rapping 16s. Um, all kinds of things, even for TV, arranging for TV shows and things is much different than what you would typically do. So in this example here, instead of trying to cover every kind of way to arrange, I'm just going to use a reference track, and in this case it's going to be a North Carolina native like me, um, Knife Wonder. I'm going to chop up his track and his arrangement points and kind of use that as a guide for my track, which is still up here. Um, but without much further ado, let me get into the zone. I'm going to be a quiet for most of this chopping part. I might even just edit it out. Um, but once I do the edits, I'll go ahead and go back and kind of talk about why I made the edits and the chops where I made them and then start getting into the arrangement. All right. So real quick, let me go over what I did when I chopped this track up. Right in the beginning here, let me run it back. Right in the beginning, I chopped up the intro. Um, usually in hip hop, we're working with four bar loops and sequences. Um, usually the hook will be eight bars, so it's two sequences. Usually the uh, verse would be 16 bars, so that's gonna be four sequences. In this example, he has a four bar intro, which is a different part of the sample than the rest of the beat. There's a warm-up here before the rapper begins. It's usually like when the rapper begins doing their ad-libs or they might even do part of the hook here. Um, actually, this is the hook sequence without drums and bass. Here the beat drops, and that's where our 16 begins, which is two eights. Um, the reason why I divide this with a midway point is because most hip-hop producers like Knife Wonder here or Alchemist, a lot of dudes from the early 2000s especially, they'll do something different at the midway point. Um, they'll drop the drums, they'll drop the bass, and kind of add transitions on every eighth and sixteen. Then of course we'll run right into the hook, um, which is the same sequence here but with the drums and bass added. And it's usually just a double of itself, four and four. And then on this example, it's not a full, fully sequenced instrumental, you could say. So that's just the outro part that he used. And I'm going to kind of use that as a template. And if you want, you can go ahead and just copy that um, two or three times if you're arranging this for a rapper. And with Ableton, you create little locators like I did at the top here simply by right clicking the line you're on. So what I mean by that is, say I select this line here, just right click between the time bar and your actual arranger and just do add locator. Then you right click it on again and you can delete it. So now that I got my locators down, I'll go ahead and start mapping my instrumental to this one. Okay, I got the arrangement going using the reference template that I use. Um, the intro, warm up, verse, midway point hook, and outro. Um, and I had to make a couple of uh, decisions based on the material I had, because you notice in my sample, it's really just a two bar Debbie Taylor song of strings and I chopped those strings up and I made a two bar, four bar sequence and I kind of repeated it through my first tutorial. Um, so to add interest or difference, one of the things I did in this example was change the chops. So in the intro, I'm just looping two bars and I'll let you hear that real quick. You just hear it looping and looping. And the reason I had to do that is because if I kept it the old way, which is just a buildup of the chops I had, 
it'll sound like I warmed the track up, waiting for the beat to drop, then did it again and wait for the beat to drop because that's what the arrangement template calls for. It calls for an intro and a warm up. So I didn't want it to feel like I used this twice or make you feel like you're waiting for something. The next part that kind of adds some difference I had to do was this, and I'm gonna mute a few of these parts. Um, is filter out the sample in the bass, of course. I'm gonna use the filter bass, and that's gonna be my hook, as you can see over here. And then let the drums kind of fade in a little bit. Now we have the verse and so on. So one thing to pick up here is that in the reference track, you'll notice his hi-hats came in first. So I did the same thing. Um, I made my kick start a little bit earlier at the midway point of the warm-up. And then I put that last snare there. Normally you can do like a just blaze reverb snare here or do like a send or some kind of a resample here. But I'm just going to leave it dry for now. And through the song, I... I guess you, the word we use is modulate. I modulate the hi-hats. What I mean by that is um, I don't let them repeat through the whole song. I cut them off at every four bar point. Um, and that's kind of like a subconscious cue for the rapper that a loop is over or four bars is over. And I'll let you hear it. It doesn't really stand out, but you'll notice that's the loop point. It just helps people with counting um, on a subconscious level. And for me, I'm just very used to doing that. You hear it a lot. Well, now that you've seen me doing it, you'll hear it in other songs too. They do it a whole lot. Um, it's probably because of the kind of um, drum machine they're using too. Um, they're literally making this much of a sequence and they have to repeat it. Whereas when we're using digital stuff, we can do whatever we want. And another cool thing, I picked this up from Alchemist and Diddy. These guys, and a lot of their old stuff, drop the snare right here. Or they'll drop everything else but the snare and the very last four bars before the hook comes. Um, I don't know why, but I guess it's one of those things you don't want the track to feel too repetitive. Um, and then the same thing, I'm gonna do the hook so on the hook part, I got the filtered sample, I got the bass line, I got the original groove template reference, everything going, and then halfway in I introduced my drums again. So I'm gonna let you guys hear that all together. Same lead on, on the hi-hats. And that's pretty much it. I mean, this is not meant to be game-changing. I just wanted it to show you guys how even with just a little bit of music or loops or samples, you can do a whole lot. Um, but knowing me, I had to do one more thing for you guys because this was boring. And what I mean by that is, as it is without vocals, um, there's a lot to be desired, but since it's hip hop and it's inevitably gonna have vocals, I decided to add it my own. Um, so what I did was I created a scratch track. And um, I'm gonna tell you, I put it here just for the hook. And I used parts of it on my midway point. So as you see, there's a piece here and there's a piece in the intro. Um, so you guys know it's part of the hook or it's going to be in the hook later so I did half and half and what's cool about this scratch I aligned it with the groove template and committed it and that's why you see these little markers here but I'm gonna let you guys hear that
All right, guys, that's all I got, man. <laughs> um, hopefully that answered your question on how I would arrange a track like that. I guess in the future when I do more tutorials on different types of uh, productions, I'll pick up more on the arrangement techniques that I learned over the years. Um, this is just real quick. Um, hopefully you guys learned a few things or picked up some things to use in your own productions. And as always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Just leave me some comments. Let me know what you want me to go over. If I wasn't clear about something, let me know. And um, I'll try to make another video addressing those things. Um, also, um, check out my channel's playlist. I've made a few more videos that have been posted on Machine Masters and AbletonLiveMasters.com. So I have a playlist that says MG for Machine Masters. So check those out. But anyway, thank you for tuning in. And hopefully... You know how that go.